Welcome back, everyone, and we are now going to proceed with the semi-final, where, as you heard, the motion is, this House believes that renewable energy projects cause more harm to the environment than good. The first two semi-finalists to take place are King Yusi and Portree. And King Yusi High School will be talking for the motion. And they are Ruri MacDonald, Beth Mikkel and Polina Pologova. And speaking against the motion are Portree High School. And that's Callan Campbell, Maria McCaskill and Edna Moran. So I'd like to start by inviting the first speaker to open the debate for the proposition from Kenyusi. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, judges, Madam Chair and fellow debaters. My name is Rudy MacDonald. My colleagues and I are going to be proposing the motion this House believes that renewable energy does more harm to the environment than good. Today, I shall focus on why wind energy does harm. My colleague, Ms Mickel, shall go into further depth about her arguments and speak mainly of why renewable energy does more bad than good. And Ms Pauyugova shall summarise her points and close our argument. Today, we shall persuade you of the harms renewable energy does to our precious environment. I shall start by explaining what these harmful structures on the hills do. With the massive blades? Yes, you guessed it the iconic wind turbine. It's great that we are finding solutions to save our planet, but what people don't realise is that renewable energy actually causes more harm to the environment than good. Concerns have been raised over the noise produced by the rotor bladers, visual impacts and deaths of the bats and birds that fly into the turbines. Yes, please. Only a minute 1% of birds are even in danger of getting hurt by a wind turbine. Well, there's actually been many deaths by birds and bats. And what are the RSPB doing about this? They're not even trying to help prevent this from happening. Like all machinery, the noise produced by the wind turbines can be very disturbing. And with me many of those situated near to their homes have found them to be very annoying. Most wind turbines are situated in remote areas. The countryside, for example, which is tranquil, calm and quiet. Well, not with a wind turbine, it won't be. Scotland is profound for its breathtaking scenery and beautiful landscapes. But when you put a wind farm in the middle of it, it just doesn't work. Why not consider placing more wind farms out of sea, some would say. Yes, but that means transporting them, using fossil fuels, and therefore causing more harm to the environment than good. And we're back to square one. Do you really think that Mr Donald Trump chose to build his international golf links website in Scotland because of the amazing wind turbines? Of course not, and many would agree. Direct from the Trump International Golf Links website, I quote, When I saw this piece of land, I was overwhelmed by the imposing dunes and rugged Aberdeenshire coastline. I knew that this was the perfect site for my Trump International Scotland. I have never seen such an unspoiled and dramatic seaside landscape. These opportunities to expand Scottish tourism and economy would be lost if we litter our landscapes with these bird-killing machines. No, thank you. Bats and birds, known as protected animals. Or are they? Because of the sheer size of the turbines... Yes, please. If renewable energies are that bad and we're not to use them, what are we going to do when our fossil fuels run out? Please bear with me while I confer with my colleagues. Well, we have many experienced scientists and technicians who need to develop new ways of clean, great renewable energy that we can rely on, which are much better. As I was saying, the price for intentionally harming or killing them could lead to six months' imprisonment and up to... £5,000 fine. So why are we letting such a monument to be built, even when we know it does significant harm? We have certain areas protected for bats and birds, which do not allow building or tampering. But you can't tie down an animal to a certain place, especially if they have the gift of flight. We need to uh, let them explore. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you'd agree that to continue to plant this renewable source would be ridiculous. Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed judges, please join me in agreeing that renewable energy does in fact cause more harm to the environment than good. Thank you.
Thank you very much to King Yusi for opening our debate. And I'd now like to invite the first opposition speaker to outline their case. Portree. Good morning, Madam Chair, judges, ladies and gentlemen, and my fellow debaters. Today, my team will be opposing the motion. This House believes renewable energy projects cause more harm to the environment than good. And let's be honest, who can truthfully sit here today really believing they do? Who can truthfully believe that fossil fuels will be a better alternative for our environment? Fossil fuels over the years have been the result of many bird-torturing oil spills, terrifying fires due to gas leaks, and possibly most obvious of all, fossil fuels are the biggest culprit for global warming. The first argument will be one which I have just mentioned. Oil spillages happen when tankers carrying large amounts of fossil fuels run aground, spilling their cargo all over the surrounding landscape. The Gulf War oil spill in 1991. Six million barrels of US oil were spilled all over the Parisian Gulf, driving no less than 50 species to near extinction. Uh, please. These oil spillages could come from any boats. It doesn't have to be for renewable, um, for, from fossil fuels. To have renewable energy such as marine energy put in place, you're going to need boats to bring the parts, and these boats could just have the same oil spillages. Do you think the oil taken on boats carrying renewable energies will be anything close to the amount of oil taken on boats that are actually transporting the oil to other areas? Probably not. Um, how much of this oil, though, do you think has been soaked up by the ground and is never going to be able to be retrieved again? How much of this oil do you think has been covered and drunk by in animals that probably died minutes later? And how much of this do you think could have been stopped if we only had these reven re sorry, revolutionary renewables sooner. My second argument. We hear from King UC High School about birds being killed by the turbines. But, in reality, wind turbines are the lowest of all the main causes of bird deaths, behind domestic cats, no less. In please. Um, Scotland's wind farms actually provide more than half of the UK. I'm sorry, half the energy? Uh, no, well, m half of uh, Scotland's uh, birds, yeah. Deaths. Deaths of birds, sorry. Deaths of birds. It's nothing like half. It's only, it's actually closer to 1% than 50. So I'm not sure where you're getting your facts from. Um, in reality, no species have ever become close to endangered from these wind turbines. And in reality, we need to stop worrying about this because what is happening is we are losing a completely viable option for our energy because of a problem which at the moment doesn't even exist. A th third argument today is one which we believe to be the strongest. Renewables were created as a carbon neutral form of generating our energy. And they do exactly that. Renewables cause no harm to the environment. After... Please... Um, renewables do produce carbon emissions. The manufacturing of renewables produces carbon emissions. Um, geothermal energy, when you drill down into the centre of the earth to release the heat, you release greenhouse gases. All of these types of renewable energy do harm our environment. I'm aware geothermal and biomass both produce carbon dioxide, but there are other options. And uh, the emissions produced in the manufacturing are a minute fraction of what are produced by fossil fuels and, some, and well, geothermal and biomass. Um, and we are saying that we should give up these revolutionary things in place of fossil fuels, which can you, can you see believe to be the future? Uh, no thanks. I know any smart individual already can see that renewables are the clear, obvious and soon to be only choice Scotland has for the future. It's time we start using them before people like the proposition ruin our planet because they still believe that fossil fuels are, are for the future. Thank you very much. No thanks. Thank you to Portree. And I'm now going to call on the second speaker to make the case for the proposition from Kinusi. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, judges, honourable chair and fellow delegates. My name is Beth Mickle. My colleague, Mr. McDonald, has already addressed the motion. So today, 
I'm going to let you into a secret. Renewable energy is not actually beneficial to our environment. As a proposition, we believe that renewable energy does more harm to the environment than good. The hype around renewable energy saving our planet is completely false. Renewable energy does more bad than good. Let me explain. In our desperate attempt to make ourselves feel better about abusing our planet for so long, we have so hastily pieced together this solution that we have overlooked the fact that it is not actually very beneficial. Bioenergy is thought to be a clean solution to global warming, but it really isn't all it seems to be. Bioenergy has a number of flaws which have been overlooked in our obsession with renewable energy. The burning of organic materials actually produces lots of greenhouse gases. Not only will it be creating holes in our ozone layer, but we will be cutting down forests and demolishing farmlands to provide growing space for these organic materials. Yes, please. You're saying that renewable energies are going to cause holes in our ozone, la ozone layer, but so are fossil fuels. This may be true, but <coughs> if we have fossil fuels in place already, we do not need to manufacture new ways of making them. If we take our time, we're not going to run out of oil just yet. We can produce a new, cleaner type of renewable energy, which is actually beneficial to our environment, because at the moment, it's not. Hydropower, no thank you. Hydropower is another example of renewable energy gone wrong. Everyone loves the idea of being clean and eco-friendly so much, they don't stop to think about the harm they're actually doing. Hydroelectric dams cause mass flooding, de destroying the surrounding environment. The flooding destroys animal habitats like woodlands and marshes. It will also destroy far farmlands on which farmers rely for their income. This could be catastrophic for farms and could take them years to recover. Hydro dams also cause changes in the river structure, which could potentially make the dams unsafe. If you're beginning to think that hydro energy might not be that great, need I even bring up the damage these dams do to our river wildlife? Fish, birds, birds and mammals will all be affected by these dams. No, thank you. You may be thinking, oh, that's only hydro and bioenergy. We still have wind power. Well, no. Wind power does more harm to the environment than good as well. The giant turbines necessary to produce wind energy cause a lot of damage to animal habitats. Wind turbines kill up to 39 million birds per year. The building and transporting of these mammoth turbines creates lots of greenhouse gases, which makes more holes in our ozone layer. Their manufacture also uses up a lot of our energy. No, thank you. Offshore wind farms affect marine life and habitats. Just because they're out of sight does not mean they're out of mind. They still affect our environment. I hate to break it to you, but geothermal energy is just as bad, if not worse. The idea behind geothermal energy is drilling down into the Earth's core to harvest the heat. The problem with this idea is that when we release heat from, the, from below the ground, we also release greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide. Drilling down into the centre of the earth also affects the stability of the ground, which could prove to be extremely dangerous for people and animals in the area. Solar energy also does more harm than good to the environment, as when the panels are manufactured, not only does it use up a lot of energy and, green and produce greenhouse gases, but hazardous waste is produced in their production. How to safely dispose of this waste is the question, and having it leak into our environment could prove to be catastrophic. Renewable energy is most definitely the future, but may I stress, future. The technology is just not well developed enough to do more good than bad to our environment. Before releasing these abominations to our planet, we need to work on developing them more and making sure they're actually going to be beneficial. We could be what could be worse than when in a few decades time, we realize that what we've unleashed on our worlds has made the crisis of global warming worse. We'll, no, thank you. We will be out of oil. We'll, we'll, we will have wasted all our money on these unbeneficial energy sources, and we will be living in the dark. You may think this sounds like a dystopian future from a book or a novel, but I can assure you it's very real. Renewable energy is not the solution. It's just going to make things worse. If you cannot see this and you have been swept away by the big talk of saving our planet, then heed my warning. We will run out of fossil fuels. We will run out of uranium, and when we do, we will have nothing. Renewable energy will have made it worse. 
If you care about our civilization, our way of life, our technological era, then you must agree. No, thank you. Renewable energy does more harm to our environment than good. Thank you. Thank you. Can you see? And I'm now going to call on the second speaker to make the case for the opposition from Portree. Good afternoon, Madam Chairman, fellow judges, fellow debaters, ladies and gentlemen. As main speaker for our team, the opposition, I would firstly like to refute some of the points made by the, the proposition before I go on to talk about our arguments in more detail. Can you see high school? have claimed that renewable energy isn't good, but neither is fossil fuels. So what are we going to do to provide energy? Well, they have claimed that scientists are gonna create a cleaner, greener way of producing energy. But for all we know, that could take years and years. Then what will we do? Sit in our darkness because we didn't get renewable energies up and running? No. The motion we are debating this afternoon is that renewable energies, energy projects cause more harm to the environment than good. We do not support this motion. Renewable energies are a good, reliable source of energy. Over this, it is estimated that around 50% of our energy has come from renewable sources. And our Scottish Government have put forward a promising, achievable goal, which aims to have 100% demand for electricity come from renewable sources by 2020. We are currently doing extremely well with this, and this goal will help us provide a positive brighter future. Our main points for today's debate are oil spillages and other fossil fuels catastrophes are causing extreme harm to wildlife, much more than renewable energies is. Wind turbines are the lowest main cause of, deaths, of bird deaths in the world, making them safe as well as clean. What about the animals that are dying? because of the habitats that are being destroyed when wind turbines are being placed? What, what about the animals that are dying because we're digging up too many fossil fuels? Oil and other fossil fuels let out so much CO2 into our atmosphere, whereas the majority of renewable energies let out none. Oil spillages are something that have terrible effects. Yes, please. Um, you say that renewable energies, the majority of them, don't let out any carbon emissions, but Actually, it's proved that geothermal energy and bioenergy produced a lot, and biomass actually produces more carbon emissions than gasoline. There are more uh, renewable energy sources than the ones you have just mentioned, and they do not release CO2. Oil spillages that are something that have terrible effects, regardless of how big or small they are. The, P the BP oil spillage, for instance, was back in 2000. 10, and it lasted five months with fatal consequences. During the spill, 7,000 birds were brutally murdered. 600 dead sea turtles were washed ashore. And 153 dolphins, which contribute to our tourist industry, were murdered, wiped out. Although the animal deaths were awful, the fact that 11 innocent people died is awful. Please tell me again how good oil really is. Yes, please. Um, you're talking about how the dolphins were affected by the oil spillages. Well, if we put in marine technology, then we're pushing out all our wildlife, so we won't have any to say. Dolphins and other marine animals aren't actually affected by marine energy technologies. The cost of the whole spillage was $40 billion, enough to cure world hunger for a whole year. The BP company have claimed to have paid £7.9 billion out in compensation to almost half a million claims. And that is just one oil spillage. Imagine the effect if you add all the oil spillages that I've, we have ever had together. Money can be returned, but life can't. Is oil really worth that? That brings us nicely on to our second point of today's debate. Wind turbines, as well as being the lowest cause of bird deaths in the world, are safe as well as clean. Renewable energy is not like oil. Thousands of animals aren't killed every so often. In fact, only 1% of birds are even in danger of getting hurt by a wind turbine. 
Renewable energy is also safe. No one on record has ever been hurt by a wind turbine. And it is very sad you cannot say the same for oil production. Produ production. Wind turbines are a huge advantage to our country. They do not release CO2 like fossil fuels do. There are enough wind turbines in the UK to power over 1.3 million homes. Throughout its working life, a wind turbine can produce 80 times the amount of energy used to make it. And once its life is over, it can be recycled, but it is built to last over 20 years. Our third point in today's debate is that oil and other fossil fuels let out huge amounts of CO2 into our atmosphere, where there's, whereas the majority of renewable energy forms let out none. All the cars in the UK release 18.3 million tonnes of CO2 per day. Yes, please. You say that fossil fuels release CO2, but the trees will take it in, all the plants and trees we have. But the more, the more that we are um, producing fossil fuels, the more space we have to clear to do that. And that means that we're not going to have as much to help soak up our CO2 emissions. Um, all, two billion tonnes of CO2 is released from all the aircraft coming from Heathrow every year. The average UK citizen emits 15 tonnes of CO2. CO2 is released in day-to-day -day things, whether we know it or not. Football games, swimming pools, web searches, text messages. But if we are powering all these things through renewable energies, we can be assured that it is not damaging our planet. Burning one barrel of oil, however, can produce 4.3 tonnes of carbon dioxide. Generating energy from the wind? Well, none. That's because wind energy does not need fossil fuels to power it. A wind turbine is simply three long blades on a base that spin with the wind. Yes, please. Fossil fuels are actually produced in the manufacture of this. So we're not actually doing any positive impacts to our environment, are we? It may be a small amount, but it's still impacting on our environment. It, um, it is such a tiny fraction, although we did say that uh, no fossil fuels are used to power the wind turbine, not to manufacture it. The spinning wind turns a generator that produces an, uh, electricity. Easy. You may argue that wind turbines are shutting down power stations, but that is not true. They are simply becoming outdated and are not reaching EU safety standards. British taxpayers now have to fork out over £70 billion to deal with toxic waste and decommission existing nuclear power stations. In a time when it's hard to make ends meet and jobs are few and far between, we simply cannot afford to have to deal with these things. That's why renewable energy is the way forward. Solar power, when installed, is pollution free. All that is happening in that is that energy is collected from the sun and unlike oil, coal and gas that is recklessly dug up from deep underground, destroying animal habitats and wiping away anything that comes in its path. It is, sold to, it is then sold to millions of people around the world at extremely high prices and extremely high cost to our planet. Solar energy isn't like that. It's clean. It is sad to find out, though, that... No, thank you that in the US alone, pollution from power plants has led to the deaths of over 30,000 people per year. Not acceptable. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that by now we have told you exactly why renewable energy is not harming our environment. Renewable energy is the best way forward and is our key to a cleaner, greener, bigger, better, smarter future. Thank you. Thank you, Portray. Um, we're now going to move on to the uh, summations from both sides. And as a reminder, no points of information during the summations. So can I call on the third proposition speaker to sum up their case? And that's from Kim Yusey. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed judges, honourable chair and fellow delegates. My name is Polina Palgova. My colleagues, Mr MacDonald and Ms Mickle, have explained the motion and I will continue to agree that renewable energy does in fact have a more negative rather than positive impact on the environment. First of all, I would like to start with a few points of rebuttal. You have said that renewable energy is safe. 
The answer, it's not. Solar power actually produces a disease called silicolysis, and the production of solar panels produces hazardous waste that harm our environment. Renewable energy, as you say, is the answer to all our problems. Well, in the 1960s, nuclear energy was said to be the answer. And how did this go down? Not well at all. And also, you say that we, the, the fossil fuels will run out. Well, this isn't until 2020. That's years away, and with the advanced technological steps that we are taking, we have the time to create renewable energy that's safe for our environment. As I was saying, we have all heard it more than once. Renewable energy is the best way forward. It is the way to save the world, etc., etc. Well, as the saying goes, you can't believe everything you hear. We are all under the impression that renewable, renewable energy will fix all our problems, secure a bright future for humanity, when in fact, this said-to-be solution creates more problems than it solves. A huge problem that springs to mind is wind power, the tall bladed structures that reign over our landscape. What harm could they possibly do? These wind farms may generate power for our country, but are responsible for killing thousands of birds and bats every year. But no, they're completely harmless. Our wildlife is already suffering due to global warming and climate change. The last time I heard, renewable energy was supposed to be environmentally friendly. Wind turbines are also considered unappealing by not, by not only the locals, but tourists as well. <coughs> Tourism is such a vital part of our industry that we depend on. We can't afford to jeopardize it by cluttering our landscape with man-made objects rather than trees. So now, not only does our wildlife not matter, but neither do the voices of our people. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at biomass, the energy type many households and schools are switching over Scotland are switching to for their benefit. It may be time to reconsider your opinion on bioenergy when I say that this ozone-friendly energy source produces more greenhouse gases than gasoline. I'm pretty sure that wasn't included in the information book. I'm pretty sure this is not the way to save our planet. But why not a better choice of renewable energy? Solar power, perhaps? Solar energy is not at its prime here in Scotland, where we're lucky to have the occasional sunny day. Even though solar panels work without the sun using diffusive solar radiation, why invest so much in something that isn't reaching its full potential? This finance could save someone's life in hospital or ensure someone's future with a good education. Even better, be used to fund a new, reliable and eco-friendly type of renewable energy. Marine energy isn't something we should applaud either. Yet again, we are responsible for destroying our oceans and killing our marine life. If renewable energy is so good for the environment, then why are the polar ice caps still melting? How come the Great Barrier Reef is still dying? You tell me. The list is endless. I hope my colleagues and I have been able to convince you that renewable energy do does more bad to the environment than good. Being the intelligent people you are, you must agree that to say otherwise is barely creditable. We are destroying our plants, we are destroying our people, and we are destroying our planet. Dear audience, I'm sure you won't walk away today knowing that the destruction of our world is in your hands. I beg you, please oppose this motion. Thank you. Thank you very much, can you see? And uh, finally, I'll call on the third opposition speaker to sum up and close the debate. From Portree. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, fellow debaters, judges, ladies and gentlemen. I would, before I go on to my speech, I would like to refute a few, a few of the arguments made by the, by the proposition. You say that this disease given by solar power is like silicosis or something. It's very rare. And what's better than a few diseased people that can be cured or a forever diseased atmosphere with no cure? And another, you say what you think about wind turbines, that is a matter of opinion. Now, 
As our team's last speaker, I would like to consolidate our team's argument that is opposing the motion that this House believes renewable energy projects are doing more harm than good. We have heard that the key arguments are oil spillages and other fossil fuel catastrophes cause extreme harm to wildlife more than renewables. Wind turbines are actually the lowest main cause of bird deaths in the world. And fossil fuels let out huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, whereas renewables let out none. Before I go on, I would like to go over a few things about the cost. The costs of renewable energy do have initial high capital costs in terms of installation and the maintenance of these farms and stations, but this is very little compared to the enormous cost of extracting fossil fuels and biomass stations, which are extremely high, where they are low for nuclear energy and zero cost for many renewable energies. The first thing I'd like to, the next thing I'd like to say is that the very serious problem with the warming of the world's atmosphere and seas associated with increasing CO2 emissions, with the result of in widespread changes in different environments and ecosystems. If this remains unchecked, it will have devastating consequences both for people and the natural world. One only needs to think of the number of cities and human individuals living just above sea levels. Can you imagine the effects of a 10 metre rise in the sea? Think of London, think of New York. Of, think of any number of cities and think of the pictures you've seen of New Orleans after it was flooded after the typhoon in 2005. In short, you are looking at a Noah's Ark type scenario. This shows that renewable energies are not doing more harm than good. The next point that supports our team's argument is in regard to the CO2 emissions. The global average for the amount of carbon dioxide emitted per person per year is 5,800 kilograms. However, in Britain, we are emitting over 13,000 kilograms per person per year. That is more than double the global international average. We should feel very ashamed by this. It is a disgrace that we have brought this label upon ourselves. That is why we have to do everything we can to reduce our CO2 emission levels. Now, one option would be to radically and dramatically alter our lifestyles to reduce the amount of power energy we use. This would mean that me or you would have to, would have to uh, reduce our levels of our use of private motor cars. That means no casual trips into town to shop or go to the movies. It means flying away abroad for the summer holidays would become a thing of the past. Our use of electrical devices at home, such as TVs, computers, fridges, and our mobile phones, would all need to be reduced, which means you can all wave goodbye to Wi-Fi. So if this all seems a bit dismal and unacceptable, it's time now to get serious about generating energy without CO2 emissions. Realistically, this means phasing out our conventional coal-burning power stations as quickly as possible while developing the wide, widest range possible power of power generating renewable energy sources. As I said earlier, the initial cost of constructing and installing one of these green power plants can be quite high, but this is a great deal less than the financial cost of extracting the fossil fuels such as coal, gas and oil. We also believe that the human costs of these industries are unacceptable, such as the human right abuses relating to the way that miners have been treated and exploited historically and even today in some developing countries. Have you ever actually considered what it's like to work not just for one day, but a whole working lifetime in these conditions? Should we allow this to continue in the 21st century? Even in recent years, there have been incidents where quite large numbers of workers have been trapped or sometimes even killed underground. Lastly, an underestimated cost is the environmental damage associated with oil spillages and other environmental pollution caused by extraction and transportation of conventional fossil fuels. So, for example, on the coast of Cornwall, the Torrey Canyon boat was wrecked on the rocks with a massive oil spillage into the sea which killed numerous seabirds and other mammals in the area. We live in Northwest Sky, where you will often see oil transporting boats taking an illegal shortcut through the Minch 
and it's only a matter of time before one of them gets wrecked and our ecosystems go with it. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope we have persuaded you by the very serious harm caused by the use of conventional fossil fuels and the urgent need to produce as our energy as much as humanly and technically possible using environmentally friendly technology. I urge you to support our team, the opposition. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Portree, and the debate has now closed, but I would like to thank both Portree and um, Can You Say for their excellent debate. Thank you very much. And now, um, to keep us on time, I would like to invite um, Hermitage Academy to take their place uh, for the motion, and I'd like to invite Charleston Academy to take their place against the motion, and we're just going to do a straight turnover.